Uh, now, half a million people in the UK are currently living with undiagnosed celiac disease, which is when the body has a serious reaction to gluten. Yeah, and with recent research showing that many of us are unaware of the signs to look out for, Professor David Sanders is joining us to raise awareness of the condition. Yeah, he is here alongside Nicola Dixon and six-year-old daughter Frankie, who was just a baby when she started experiencing symptoms of celiac disease. Welcome to you all. Frankie, thanks for coming, first and foremost. You're looking good. Having the outfit today? Having a nice time? Yes, <laughs> excellent, Nicola. Great to have you with us. Thank you. Uh, David, we'll start with you. Um, a lot of people would be unaware of celiac disease. So can you tell us what it is and I guess what people should be looking out for? How does it affect the body? Of course. Celiac disease is a condition that causes an inflammation in your gut. And that's driven by gluten, which is something most of us have heard mm -hmm. the word. But, but gluten's in wheat, barley and rye. So it's in things that we eat, day-to-day -day things, bread, pasta, pizza, and it's used very widely in the food industry. Um, it's not something that we have control over. It's what we call an autoimmune disease. So that means it's your own immune system that attacks your gut when you eat gluten. So other autoimmune diseases are type 1 diabetes or autoimmune thyroid disease. But the unique thing about celiac disease is, unlike those other diseases, you can't stop them. If you develop type 1 diabetes, you need insulin. But amazingly, with celiac disease, if you withdraw gluten from your diet, for the vast majority of people, their gut will heal and they will be better. Is there any okay. genetics in this? Like, is it yeah. passed out? Yes, it is. There's a, there, so it affects one in 100 people. Uh, currently in the UK, about two thirds of the individuals with celiac disease haven't been diagnosed. So that means that there are half a million people out here, uh, you know, people listening today who are very likely to have undiagnosed celiac disease. And there is a family history, so if you are affected, then all your first degree relatives, brothers and sisters, parents, kids you may have, mm -hmm. um, will have a 10% risk. And, and Nicola, you, you, I mean, you know about this firsthand yourself. You've, you've gone through the mill of it here, haven't you? Can, we have. can you tell us your story of what happened with Frankie and, and you know, all the, experience, all the symptoms that you experienced when Frankie was a baby? Absolutely. So we first realised we had a bit of an issue when Frankie stopped growing very well. She stopped putting on weight um, and she um, became quite poorly. So she was vomiting all of the time, losing weight. How old was she And at that she was around 15, 16 months She started, like, time. solids and stuff, I guess. So everything was coming up. Yeah. She had to have lots of time off nursery. And obviously everybody thought, oh, it's a sickness book. bug. If a, sick, if a child's sick, you think it's a sickness bug. So, you know, she wouldn't be able to go to nursery for 48 hours. We'd have to take time off work. Oh, it's been so hard. Um, society's not really set. To, no. for parent, working parents when sure. children get sick. It's really not. Were you back and forth from the doctors all the time then, just trying we to figure out what was going on? We went to the doctors many times and they said, look, you know, children get these viruses. Uh, our GP was fantastic, always saw us whenever we um, went in, um, but no one thought celiac disease, so she continued to lose weight. She had a permanent frown. The shoe size wasn't changing, her hair wasn't growing. So we saw these things and we just kept on hearing, it, it's probably a Oh, vibe. bless her. Oh, yeah. So cute as a baby, Frankie. <laughs> yes. You're still cute now. Yeah, no no frowns anymore, <laughs> No frowns anymore. All smiles now. <laughs> so what happened that, um, that, that you finally got the diagnosis you needed and what change did you see? In... So what we had to do, she was so susceptible to everything. She was hospitalised, she sort of with bronchitis, and she just couldn't fight anything off. And we got to crunch point. We were a family in crisis. We couldn't go out. We couldn't have a normal family life. It's been so stressful. She'd be, it was so stressful. We, you know, it was upsetting her sister because, you know, we couldn't do any normal family activities. And um, so I decided to go back to the GP and change my language and say, look, I want to work with you as an expert in health, but I'm the expert in my child, and I would urge anybody, mother's instinct, father's instinct, yeah. you know your child, so let's find out what's wrong with her. And at that point, we got a referral to a paediatric gastroenterologist. Do you know, I'm so sorry that you went through that, because there is nothing worse than when your child's ill, and as you said, society's not set up no. when your child's ill and you've got to take time off work. No. Um, what no. was the testing process like? 
So, um, we managed to get seen quite quickly. We went down to Worcester and we went uh, to see the specialist and I walked in and explained Frankie's symptoms, you know, always thrown in, huge extended tummy. Right. Um, and the vomiting, the losing weight. And he said, oh, I'm really surprised you're here because she's a textbook, she has textbook celiac disease. Um, Had we'll you had any of the family at all? Any, no, any... I did. Hadn't really heard of it. I thought a gluten-free lifestyle was something Californians sure. did. Um, you know, had no idea what it was. And I said, oh, OK. Um, he said, right, we need to do two things to confirm, a blood test and a gene test to see if the gene is present. And that will allow the NHS to confirm celiac disease. What, what was it like hearing that news? Because you've gone through, you know, these years of not knowing what it was, mm. uh, yes. back and forth, and I couldn't imagine what you, what you were going through. So to hear a diagnosis like that, yes. what was it like? It was pretty life-changing. Um, and I thought, OK, right, great, what's the medication? And he's, th there is no medication. The medication is a lifelong gluten-free diet. And I thought, hmm, so that's going to cure. Uh, OK, OK. And three days later, on a gluten-free diet, she got up, having previously been listless, lying around, frowning. She was smiling, got up, jumped off the sofa. And my daughter said, are you going to tell her off? And I said, no, I'm not. It was miraculous. Oh. Nicola, could Frankie find the camera then as well as she can now? Cos that girl is... ..explaining <laughs> 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 Nice work, Frankie. <laughs> David, <laughs> bringing you in just a little bit. Is this... Is, this, is celiac disease... Uh, has it always been there and now we know more about it? Or has it become more prevalent as our diets and our lifestyles have, have changed? It has always been there, but you are right, it's also become more common. Whether it's because we're eating more gluten, whether it's because we're seeing more autoimmune, self-immune diseases, no one actually knows. I've spent 25 years doing this and I'm none the wiser, but it's definitely far more common. And what's interesting is you say that if you do become... Uh, diagnosed with it, if you get your diagnosis, you don't necessarily, you shouldn't necessarily cut gluten out of your diet immediately, is that right? Correct. So it, it's really important to make a diagnosis. And we're all eating gluten, uh, and you know that there's an awful lot of noise around gluten, lifestyle changes and other things, but this is a disease. So uh, the symptoms that you can come with, some might be gut symptoms, typical in the way that Frank described, and it can affect children and adults equally. So your average person with celiac disease might wait for up to 13 years before they're diagnosed, particularly amongst adults. So there's a delay, there are non-specific symptoms, they might be feeling really tired. Because their gut's not working properly, they may not uh, absorb vitamins properly, so low iron, low vitamin B12, and so on. So uh, what's crucial is that you do not change your diet. Celiac UK are the national patient charity, and they are fantastic. They're the oldest charity for this in the world. Yeah. Um, they have a self-assessment questionnaire online. So if you've had a journey where you think, well, maybe it's me, maybe I'm listening to this, it yeah. might be me that's got that, please go online, go through the questionnaire, you can yeah. take it to your GP, and whatever you do, don't withdraw gluten from your diet. Go through yeah. the formal testing. Well, we're actually going to put that um, assessment on, on our uh, website as well, if anybody wants to go there and take the assessment. But, Frankie, I've, I, I'm, you know, I think you were born for TV, I've got to say, but <laughs> how, how are you feeling now? Good. Yeah. Feel good? And, Nicola, you, you, I mean, keeping on top of the diet, you're finding it quite easy now? It's... It's much better once you get used to it. Yeah. Um, it can be difficult sometimes, particularly um, we've seen the aisles for gluten-free food shrink and be replaced by a lot of vegan foods and vegetarian foods. Um, but we are managing it. Oh, um, good. Good. Well, thank <laughs> you for coming on. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks, thank you, Frankie. Nicholas.